Well, I was going to do a video about my power bank, which I just built, which uh, I can use to load down power supplies and see how well they perform, how efficient they are, and if they blow up. However, I hit a snag. Uh, my AC power meter broke, which means that I had to use my crappy uh, energy logger, which is just not accurate enough to do efficiency measurements. So I'll save that for a rainy day. And today, well, actually it is rainy. I'll save that for another day. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at this Antec PC power supply, which failed on me quite a while ago, but I hung on to it for some reason. So Antec, as you might know, is a fairly high quality power supply manufacturer. Uh, they specialize in PC power supplies. This is a uh, modular power supply. So that means it doesn't have wires. Well, it had the ATX wiring, but I ripped that off, obviously, because who the hell needs ATX wiring? Pretty much it, uh, it just failed. I mean, I don't know what the problem is, but uh, at least we're gonna take a look at the insides and um, yeah, possibly see what failed. Yeah, so it's open now and uh, really it's not much better for the camera. So I think I'm gonna disassemble it a bit more. Kind of an interesting construction detail here is that the these solder connections hold down the the power socket so the power socket actually holds in this this PCB so you can only get it out by so desoldering which is kind of weird like why would you do that that's that's just hard for assembly so this is the first PC power supply I'm really tearing down and there's this this thought in power supplies with PC enthusiasts that if you buy a PC power supply, you get, like if you buy a, a name brand, one of the uh, better known brands like Antec. Antec is a, is a good brand. Uh, they generally uh, contract Seasonic, which is a very good quality power supply manufacturer. Think they get the best possible quality power supply. But in reality, it's, there's quite a lot of cutting corners because PC power supplies are really cheap. Like this 550 watt power supply was like 80 bucks. If you, if you look at other kinds of power supplies, like industrial power supplies or lab power supplies, you never get 550 watts. You get that for 500 bucks or a thousand. Uh, just keep that in mind when, uh, when discussing this power supply, because it's a good quality power supply, but it's built down to a price. Like there are obvious ways they, they try to cut costs here. So for instance, it is a DC brushless motor, so it's a, basically a standard fan motor, but it, it, it's just, it has bushings for bearings. It doesn't have proper um, ball bearings. So this is a, this is a cheapie. It still has uh, a CSA and a UL uh, code, which is surprising. Also the, the fan is connectorized, which is very nice. That's a, that's a good touch. Now, if you look at the bottom, uh, we basically see what I, uh, what I said before. Um, when we were tearing down that super high quality, the, the alien technology power supply that had like a very special sheet underneath a PCB material sheet and it was uh, held down very well. This is just a PE sheet. You can, you can feel it's polyethylene. So it's the same kind of plastic that uh, shopping bags are made from. And uh, it's held down by a dot of glue. <laughs> it's just like... And otherwise, uh, looking around at the uh, casing, it's just stamped steel, stamped and folded steel. Very cheap. It is uh, one millimeter steel. Uh, so usually on the really cheap power supplies, you get uh, 0.6 millimeter. So here's the, uh, the main unit, the uh, main PCB of the power supply. And before I remove the heat sinks to make everything a bit easier to see, I uh, just wanna go through the input protection. So here we have like obviously this, this was soldered against the uh, power connector, so this was the power input connector. It has a separate positive lug for the uh, earth connection, which is very good. Other stuff we can see, uh, basically all we can see here is um, a uh, differential mode cap, a choke, and or a common mode ch cap, choke, and two differential mode caps. And that's all they have on here. Uh, this goes through a little uh, RF bead this is a bead and it has like an extra uh, loop around it. That's why it's a bit bulky. Looking here, um, we have the fuse here. 
and we have some more LCL filtering and then immediately it goes to the bridge rectifier which is just dangling off <laughs> so this is why I wanted to show you how, uh, how everything was put together without getting the heat sinks off this this is just bad this is crap they attempted to glue it down but the glue filled they had no QA to make sure that it was actually glued down the only other component I can see is um, this this component here, sorry, the light. Uh, this um, this component, this is an MOV, so it does have MOV protection, but it doesn't have any kind of inrush current protection. Something else I'd like to show you before I remove the heat sinks is that they actually, like here, here are two power transistors, and they, uh, they put a little copper sheet directly touching the uh, power MOSFETs. And then after that, they put uh, the insulator and then the heat sink. So this just increases the effective heat dissipation area for these MOSFETs. It's a very nice touch. You just don't see that at all in PC power supplies usually. It's right. The uh, heat sinks are off. Uh, I had to remove the primary bulk capacitor, which is actually not that good of a capacitor. It's a 85 degree rated uh, no brand definitely not a Japanese brand uh, capacitor. So first of all, uh, just for some context, this is a fairly old power supply. As far as I know, it's about 10 years old, the design, and it does really show because 10 years ago, power supplies were a little bit less of a competitive market. It was still competitive, but there was not that much competition on quality. So. You can see see some interesting stuff. For, for instance, the uh, PCB is just a uh, crappy fiber phenolic uh, board. They use the very crappy, um, this is also phenolic based resin to tie everything down. And the downside of this resin is that when you pour it, uh, you can see it, it forms very thin strands. It's actually a very fluid uh, material. So it does actually get under everywhere. It's very good for, for sealing and for like uh, making sure this is all, it, it goes everywhere. It goes in between the windings and all that. But here it, it just created a void because it does have quite some surface tension, uh, but it's also fairly thin. So it just forms thin walls everywhere. Uh, now they use more of a heat melt glue type uh, material, which holds much better over time and uh, yeah, it's just better. I would have expected a larger package in diode bridge here. So then we go to power factor correction. Uh, this is obviously the choke. Uh, this here is a two-legged device, so this is definitely the diode. Uh, unfortunately, nothing special. It's just a uh, fast recovery diode. And uh, these two transistors do the PFC switching. I'm kind of interested how, what they do here. They these two transistors are heat sunk very strongly, so these apparently make a lot of heat. Even though these are the actual switching uh, transistors for the topology, and usually PFC is like, it's a, it's a small part of your power consumption. The main power dissipation in your whole uh, power supply is the output rectifiers, uh, and after that the uh, primary switches and after that the power factor correction so I'm kind of interest, interested to see uh, possibly what they're doing is continuous mode power factor correction which is slightly less efficient but has lower requirements on the uh, primary capacitor and uh, of course that might just be a volume issue for a yeah, 550 watt power supply so. and that would also explain the higher power consumption of these transistors now, as far as topology goes, there are just two transistors here. They don't obviously go into some kind of big inductor. Um, there's this here, but that's just a common mode choke. This actually just may be a pulse transformer for the uh, upper MOSFET. So uh, this is almost certainly a forward converter. There is, of course, the mandatory... By the way, this input, I would have expected if they connectorize the fan, which is here, why don't they connectorize the input power connector? That's a bit strange, isn't it? Anyway, of course there's the uh, offline 
uh, converter that does uh, five volt uh, standby power with a three hole diode and there's an output capacitor here. It's a little bit, bit tucked away here. Uh, that's just fairly simple. This is a Viper 20 low cost, low complexity uh, offline switching power supply. Uh, but going to the main power supply, here's the uh, big transformer, obviously. And it being a forward converter, uh, I would usually expect just regular diodes here. Yeah, these are MBR 4060s. Just regular shot key barrier diodes. So uh, this is just normally rectified. So, uh, I mean, it is, it is an older power supply. You would kind of expect this. Uh, this is not an 80 plus gold power supply or anything. And clearly they have two diodes for the 12 volts, one for 5 and one for 3.3 volts. And they're all the same. Kind of interesting is these inductors floating here. They seem to be uh, in series with the um, 5 volt and 3.3 volts. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, they are truly in series. Like here, if you look at this output, uh, this goes through that di uh, through that inductor and then directly into the diode. Ah, I see. Oh, this is this is pretty uh, pretty interesting actually. So what you can see here, these are the six output connections on the transformer. This is ground. This is obviously uh, the biggest uh, area. This is 12 volts, goes to the two output diodes. And this goes both to 5 volts and 3.3 volts. So what they're doing here is using these output inductors, they step down the voltage even more. Uh, and they do that by effectively adding turns. Ford converters have the added bonus of their configuration, even though it's, it's like an old and relatively inefficient uh, type of power converter. You can decrease the output voltage simply by putting an inductor in series uh, with one of the windings to, to drop some extra voltage. It's not very accurate, and usually you need post regulation. So let me just see. Now there are no active devices on the output. So it's, it's very unlikely that they have any post regulation. They just have uh, big LC filters. And this is also par for the course for uh, PC power supplies. Uh, instead of doing any kind of fancy uh, low ESR capacitive filtering on the output, uh, they just put giant LC filters and lots of capacitors, uh, very high capacity capacitors on the output. And, um, that way you still get good noise rejection on the output with uh, relatively low cost. You don't need any post regulation. So yeah, uh, this, is, this is just a quirk of the older uh, power supplies. Now, aside from these LC filters, uh, what you can also see is uh, lots of power shunts here. Uh, these are obviously for uh, overcurrent protection and possibly they have multiples simply because this was a multi reel design. So it had multiple 12 volt reels. Yeah, I see 12 volt one and 12 volt two here. So they do uh, multiple reels. Uh, and they just separate them out. It's, it's actually all electrically connected, uh, but they separate them out with uh, overcurrent protection. So this is also uh, why we see two PCBs here. So we see a primary PCB, we see some optocouplers in between, we see a secondary PCB. So the primary PCB will, will be the actual power controller. And it is a, yeah, <laughs> it's a CM6800. So. Uh, champion uh, Marco, the standard switching power supply, PC power supply chip they use everywhere. Uh, you can use it in forward and uh, resonant converter, quasi resonant converters. And on this side, all I can see is a, an LM324 op amp. So this is just going to be the overcurrent protection. And they do that with an op amp. And yeah, that's really everything. There's surprisingly little to these power supplies. There's a lot of little components that do tiny, tiny adjustments. They have the, uh, of course, the components like this, the uh, big power resistor that does current sensing for the, uh, 
primary switches and this one for uh, power sensing on the PFC. But other than that, it's just not that, that much to it. Uh, a lot of components are simply links. So you see a lot of solder points, but a lot of those are just to, to overcome the limitations of the, the one-sided PCB. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, I, I did forget uh, they do have a, an over-temperature sensor here uh, on the secondary uh, side heatsink. Obviously, the secondary side heatsink is going to get the hottest because it all has regular rectifiers on it. And also, I should just add to this whole price uh, thing, the, these connections, these modular connections, they, they are being sold as a bonus. So you, you pay extra, you pay 10, 20, 30 dollars extra to get a mod modular power supply instead of a regular power supply with the wires all attached. But the manufacturers don't actually have to spend that much more. Like this PCB costs them nothing, it's like, like 5 cents for them. And these connectors, yeah, they're also not that, that important. And the cables they give, uh, give you, well, they obviously need some, some extra connectors instead of just being soldered directly. But really, the difference in cost is not that much. So uh, this is why you see a lot of manufacturers jumping on bandwagons. Uh, the modular connectors were very popular and pretty expensive uh, back in the day when this uh, was a current power supply. Yeah, and everybody just went for it because it's such a low margin business uh, they need all the extra margin they can get so yeah this was a look at the antec neo he 550 watt power supply and um yeah this is this is one of the reasons why i didn't initially uh set out to review pc power supplies because pc power supplies are not quite as interesting as uh, power adapters like the, the closed bricks or open frame power supplies or industrial power supplies. It's just very much the same, uh, built down to a price, not very exciting components. Like they're all going to be CM6800 based designs. Uh, you're not going to find LLC resonant except for the really high end stuff, which I won't ever have for review. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bit meh. Uh, but anyway, I hope you liked it, uh, just to see a comparison with all my other power supplier teardowns. And yeah, also, I, I almost forgot, uh, there's no obvious signs of damage in here. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it, uh, but I am just going to discard it. Uh, there's no reason for me to hold on to this, so this will just go into the bin. All right, time for another power supply teardown. These uh, this items. is another one of those really high quality Should power supplies that I got in the mystery package about a year and a half ago. Uh, this is an Excelsis system power supply, I and it's extremely interesting job because in it is a because every modular power supply is this. These are modules that you can it is theoretically pull out. Uh, oh, I guess.